Hey everyone, I'm Shaman. Welcome back to Med Bros. Today we're going to be talking about how to get a great score on the SAT. It's a pretty big exam, so let's get right into the tips. Now the first way a lot of people can save money is by not taking a prep course. There's a lot of problems with the way they review exams, there's problems with the way they waste a lot of time, they don't focus on your individual weaknesses, and also they cater to a specific group of students that might not be you. The only reasons I would see why you would want to consider a prep course is if you don't understand basic strategies such as multiple choice strategies, very simple strategies that you should be able to figure out on your own. But if you don't, then you might want to consider taking a prep course. The other reason you might want to take a prep course is that if you're not self-motivated to self-study. But for those people, I would say you need to learn how to sit down and focus yourself because you'll definitely need that in college. So it's great to start with the SAT. Now with that out of the way, how do we start preparing for the SAT? So you first want to look at College Board's website and look at many of the questions that are offered on the practice tests. Just get a sense of what the exam is like and what concepts you'll be seeing on the exam. Now, if you feel very unfamiliar with many of the concepts that are taught, or you don't have a good grasp of how to tackle passages or proper writing rules, then you might want to consider reading the SAT study guide or any other source that will allow you to learn that information. For the majority of students, you should dive straight into questions. Because the SAT, what you want to do is not master every concept. You just want to learn the questions. There are a specific set of questions that will appear over and over again. Just worded in a different way or with different numbers. But they'll always ask for similar things. Once you master the way to answer these questions and how to get the answer from what they're asking, you'll be able to tackle basically any question on the SAT. You just want to focus on the specific questions that the SAT will ask and master them. You don't need to learn everything about a concept. There are a lot of practice resources for the SAT. There are so many practice tests out there, it's very easy to get overwhelmed. The first thing you want to do is take a step back and realize that you're not going to be doing all of these practice tests. You might not be familiar with studying for a large exam like this because you're in high school, but you don't want to do all these resources. I know you probably want to do really well and you feel that you should do everything you can, but you want to focus on the most important resources and just look at those. Everything else that isn't as effective, you just want to throw out. The practice tests that are most similar to the actual SAT are the ones offered on College Board's website. So I would recommend just using those. The ones offered by other companies like Kaplan, for instance, they vary widely in quality, but many of the questions aren't worded like the actual test. Also, certain test makers have certain philosophies such as making test questions much harder than the actual exam so that you better understand the concept. And that is not a good idea at all. So these test makers have varying quality and for the most part, I would stay away from them and stick with what you know will work, which is College Board's SAT practice tests. These eight practice tests that College Board offers will have all the types of questions that you'll see on the actual exam. There are more than enough questions to cover all your bases. Now, of course, you want to take this College Board SAT practice exam. You also want to review it. The only thing I would recommend when taking it is mark every question you're unsure of and time yourself just like the real exam. Now, if you're very motivated, other than these eight practice tests, you can also do the 2P SAT practice tests on College Board website, and you can also do Khan Academy's SAT resources. They're pretty good, the questions are pretty accurate to what the SAT actually looks like, but don't feel compelled to do these. The last thing you want is to get overwhelmed by trying to do all of these. Now, with reviewing the exams after you've taken them, you want to review every single answer. The reason you want to do it for this test is because you're memorizing the specific types of questions that College Board is going to ask you because they're going to appear over and over again. So whether you got it right, whether you guessed, whether you got it wrong, you're still memorizing the types of questions. Now what I also highly recommend is when you get a question wrong or maybe you guessed on a question but you still ended up getting it right, you want to make a notebook and put in the practice test number and the question number for each of these questions that you were unsure of. And every week you want to come back to this notebook 
and come back to those questions to make sure you understand them. Because I guarantee you, many of those questions you get wrong will be on your actual exam. So you wanna make sure you get those right. I'd recommend coming back to the notebook and looking up those questions every week or two, depending on your level, maybe three weeks if you feel very confident. I would say the number one mistake that high school students make when studying and reviewing for the SAT is after taking a practice exam and getting a wrong answer, they don't completely understand how they got the wrong answer and they just move on. And I can see why they do that because maybe they feel they don't have all the proper resources to 100% understand why their answer was wrong. Here are a couple strategies that might help you understand why you got the answer wrong and how you get to the correct answer. You can make study groups of two to three people. You can take the practice SAT test together and you can review your answers together. This way you'll be able to cover each other's backs when one of you might not know something and another of you does. So it's an effective way to study. Also, don't underestimate asking a family member, whether it's your immediate family, your cousin, anyone. Anyone you know that has the knowledge, you should be asking them. And don't be afraid to ask your teachers for help either. One thing people often don't do, and you really should, is you can find the exact question you're asking online, in most cases. I hope these tips help. If you're interested, I got a 2270 on the SAT and you can do just as good or you probably even way better if you follow these tips. Thank you for watching and subscribe if you haven't, like, share, and I'll see you in my next video.